Once upon a time, a little boy and his loving mother were preparing for a grand celebration. David, the baby before us, was no longer a baby. In fact, for today, on this incredibly special day, the day of his birth, he was turning two. Zoe, his mother, had her heart set on perfection, for her little prince, only the best would do. Perfection was the benchmark with no room for error, right down to the fluffy pink frosting on his cake. Why, not even Justin, David's estranged father, could squash her ideals. Nothing would be permitted to permeate their happiness and tight bond, especially today. And no birthday celebration is ever complete without the perfect gift. In this case, a bear, aptly named Teddy. Teddy was no regular bear. No, no. Teddy was an extraordinary bear. A sentient being that with one squeeze could light even the darkest path. <laughs> For you see, this was the perfect present for our young ingenue. Why? Well, sadly, David's subconscious was filled with darkness, a soul-shaking, all-consuming darkness that even infiltrated his sweet slumber. Was Teddy sent to help? You know what they say about dreams, don't you? Well, often a skewed representation of a real, but David had such a perfect life. What could be causing such calamity? David's reality did not add up. Coming. This is not the happily ever after tale you want for this tiny tot, but it's the one that needs telling. And I have to caution you that this review may be triggering for some people and will not be spoiler free. It is impossible to talk about this game without telling the beginning, the middle, and the end. We're about to embark on a great adventure with Among the Sleep, cursed by things that go bump in the night. A living nightmare David won't soon forget. And if you're prepared to join me, one you soon won't forget either. Set in the 1990s, Among the Sleep follows David in his quest to find his mother. He awakes in the middle of the night to discover that his prized possession, his security blankie, Teddy, has gone missing. This is the true start of the game, since the opening scene is kind of a jumping point to set you in the right frame of mind as the player. Maneuvering through the levels as a toddler comes with its challenges. You are, of course, not meant to fight back against entities you will encounter, and you will also have limited range and mobility. You can crawl, walk, and even run. Crawling might seem pointless, but it comes with its strengths. Crawling is faster for David. It is a skill he has already mastered in his brief time on this earth. Crawling allows him to fit into small spaces and paths. Walking is slower but is necessary at points throughout the game and running is a great skill. Until it isn't. David can only run for short stints before losing his balance and falling. For anyone that has spent even a fraction of a second in the presence of a clumsy, not so sure-footed tot, this outcome is pretty darn accurate. You can also peek around corners for obvious reasons and if something is too high to reach but seems important, there is usually a reason for that. David can overcome most obstacles if they are an appropriate height, so be on the lookout for items you can push to bridge the gap. Certain items can also be picked up to throw or to collect. There's a reason for most everything in his little world. Even the small, superficial things are not without purpose. This short four chapter game, approximately two to four hours in length, carries on from where the introduction ended as we persist through the first chapter, duly titled The Home. Strange sounds can be heard in the distance as David, barely roused, is sent tumbling from his bed. Our ill-intended adventure has begun. The house is dark and eerie with an impending sense of dread. Toys and other baby-related paraphernalia are scattered about. You pick up various objects, a ball, a toddler tested favorite toy, and even a drawing, possibly etched by David himself. An ominous figure scribbled out in a cloak of black crayon. The sound is getting closer. It is distorted rumbling accompanied by a muffled voice. Did we just hear a desperate call for help? The voice is that of our dubious companion, Teddy. Why dubious? Just listen to him speak. We have to be very quiet. You don't know what might be listening. 
that voice, those words, that false illusion of empathy, is this a trick? While not a trick, if you're a well-rounded horror fan like me, you can't possibly play a survival horror game without questioning everyone and everything, and Teddy is certainly questionable. I came to find out after playing through Among the Sleep that Teddy, our protector, our sole comfort in this trepidatious trek, is voiced by Roger Jackson, aka Scream's very own Ghostface, a perfect addition to a game set in the 90s. Crowbite, the small Norwegian studio that could, came to play for keeps with such a big name, a choice that I think was an excellent enhancement to the North American release. With Teddy now in tow, the game moves swiftly, danger lurking in every corner. Don't worry though, Teddy will help you with your clues and hints as you go. Be careful, be quiet, or it will find you. Solid advice from our cuddly companion, but not exactly soothing. Mom can help, perhaps. We need to find Mom. She can fill the emptiness with hope, but pulling back the bed covers, there is but a void where Mom's warm body should be. Where is she? Why won't she save us? To add insult to injury, a storm rages on outside these walls while a different sort of storm rages within. Hiding is the game's central key for survival. In The Home, you will find closets and cupboards to hide in, but each chapter is different depending on the surroundings. You will know when the need to hide arises. Trust in your instincts and your senses. The stranger is lurking in this chapter. You need to make your escape. Plunging your tiny frame through this ocuous mirrored world, you are encased in memories from a not-so-distant past. Grandma's locket, the finish line, must surely be near. In a way it is, well, for this chapter at least. You are now in the hub of David's dream world, a space of brief safety in the form of a child's playhouse. The playhouse from the inside looks normal enough with one hulking exception. This contraption is the passageway between chapters, and David's various collected memories are used to unlock it. Ushering us forward with the promise of finding Mum, we leap once again into the mysterious backdrop of the awaiting world. That being said, we're not going to go too in-depth for the next three chapters, but spending time where it truly counts, which will be revealed in due time. The fear does elevate with each section, but never gets to the point of terrifying or even scary in the conventional sense. For the majority of Chapter 2, The Playground, you're tasked with finding owl figurines, some of which open up the next sections of this chapter. There is the hint of threats, but nothing that really causes the player to deviate from their objective. Footsteps all about, the screen shutters as the foreboding melody creates an atmosphere that blankets us in our darkness as heavy as the night air around us. Teddy guides us in our quest while Mum's spectral-like voice comes to us as we gather tokens and complete our objective of finding the next memory, a music box. Midway through Chapter 3, The Forested House, and most of Chapter 4, The Closet, is built to keep us on edge. Haida appears in Chapter 3 as we assemble a puzzle, Mother's voice encouraging us to complete it. Walking through paintings that open up new sections to find the pieces we so desperately required to leave this not-so-homey dwelling, overgrown with tree roots and moss. This area is certainly menacing. Haida is a staticky figure, featureless with the exception of her piercing white eyes, all limbs and bed raggled hair, wearing a threadbare white slip dress. You want to stay as far away as possible from this otherworldly being. Find the memory of your favorite book to free yourself from the shackles of this place. Chapter 4 is the last chapter that you are tasked with an objective, but is not the final part of this sinister game. Back in the closet from the introduction, it is much bigger, joyless, and frightening than you first perceived it. This was my favorite part of the game as it was a bit more complex and preyed heavily on inducing a fear of heights. Fall and you will perish. Luckily, anytime you die in this game, whether it be from a fall or one of the handful of monsters clutching you in their life-ending grasp, you will continue from your last auto-save point, which are thankfully plentiful. Moving objects to reveal the correct path while being incredibly careful not to disturb heap, one misstep toppling a glass bottle, Heap will shriek and make his presence known. Like Haida, the absence of facial features but the soul-piercing bright white eyes entrenched in a long grayish-black coat. This chapter gave the player even more clues about the true message of David's story, and if you're looking for a spoiler-free experience, this would be the point to stop. 
hidden cubby holes in this area are clad with crude drawings that point to a much deeper meaning. Mum is not the protector she claims to be. She has a mean streak that erupts when she drowns her sorrows in alcohol. I never do a review without reading everything I can because as a gamer, it's so easy to miss subtleties along the way. Upon a second glance into the world of Among the Sleep, the game is riddled with clues right from the very start. Mum's shirt in the opening scene has a few wine stains. The oozing black floors tell a tale of clumsy intoxication. Mum's anger manifesting on the child as a quaking blur of fright. As well as Mum holding Teddy's mangled body, missing an arm that was torn from him by Haida. Or rather, Mum's menacing inebriated form as manifested by David. In the end, all the trinkets come together to form our reality. We see puzzle pieces, owl figurines, and random calamities strewn about. The remnants of a once happy family home, now in disarray. A knock can be heard at the door. Mum sobs quietly, and if you're brave enough to approach, she shoves you away violently. This is all too much. She is overwhelmed by the wreckage of her life and is taking it out on poor David an innocent child only acting and behaving as children do. My heart bleeds for him. As a mother myself, I'm awash with a myriad of emotions because very easily any one of us could find ourselves in Zoe's shoes. As the toddler approaches the door to find the source of the knocking, an ethereal light fills the screen and dad's voice urges us forward. Is our true savior finally here? If you finish here, you will be led to believe so. A somewhat happy ending as a father and son are reunited at long last. Not is all what it seems. And this is the part that I did not know. This game contains a prologue. In the original version, it is given as a free download. In the enhanced version, it is bundled with the base game. There is a reason Mum drinks. The shadow from the first chapter of the base game is Dad. It is not clear at this point if Zoe drinks as a result of Justin's actions, or rather, Justin's actions are the result of Zoe's drinking. Either way, Justin is physically abusive, and the family is much more troubled than we can fathom. When I said this game is not conventionally frightening, I think now you can see my reasoning. I strongly believe Among the Sleep was mistitled as a survival horror experience, but rather should be categorized as a psychological horror of which it is unnervingly precise in its capacity to fill us with fear. David is not safe with the two people in his life with whom his safety should be priority number one. As mentioned in the beginning, this game can be triggering for some players. This world can be a very unkind place, unkind to some more than others. The game is a hidden gem that I think deserves a playthrough. It can be downright somber and disheartening, but the storytelling that indie studio Krillbright achieves in this masterpiece is unquestionably superb. I didn't need a ton of voice acting and cutscenes to understand what I was being sold. My imagination filled what some others might consider gaps and a missed opportunity to add more that in my opinion is not at all needed. I was happy to hear the enhanced version improved upon the graphics, but that was only a small inconvenience at the first of the game, before I understood the premise. Before moving on, I want to mention the one and only miss for me was the believability of some of the actions of a toddler. Outside of my YouTube presence, I'm an early childhood educator. I've yet to meet a toddler that can do some of the things David can, but that's me nitpicking, trying to exploit any con I can for the purpose of being as thorough and as honest as I can. It did not affect my experience, but was more of an earwig that gnawed a little bit at my better understanding of a child's fine motor skills. Other reviewers mentioned bugs and frame rate issues at launch in late 2015, that I didn't really experience because I played this game much later on my PS4 Pro. All that being said, I do understand that Among the Sleep may appeal to a bit of a niche market, and I get that reviews will vary based on your preference. I can only speak to my thoughts and opinions, and for me, it really landed. Even though I have started a series dedicated to survival horror, I always want to offer diversity in my reviews across platforms and price points, so this is the reason I chose this as a follow-up to my last video, Obscure. As a modern title, it is still very affordable, ranging from $27 to $32 on price charting, and available on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, 
and on Steam you can enjoy the enhanced version at a mere 1949 Canadian. Ease of play and control, it can be completed in one sitting. But that one sitting will find this game leaving a mark on your soul much longer than Obscure ever could. Thanks so much for making the time for me and Among the Sleep. Please feel free to continue the conversation below in the comment section. Interacting with the gaming community is the reason we enjoy making videos and we love hearing what you think and what you would like to see from us going forward. Until next time, take care and game on.